Hello Trailblazer fans, Blazers Edge readers. Welcome to another player review here on BlazersEdge.com. I'm Sam Tung and today talking about another one of the bench players for the Trailblazers and that would be Thomas Robinson. A player that was acquired by the Trailblazers last summer in 2013. Robinson has really had a, a rocky start to his NBA career, drafted fifth overall by the Sacramento Kings in 2012, and as we all know, traded then mid-season to the Houston Rockets, wasn't really able to figure out a way to stick in Houston, and then ended up in a, in a trade last summer, ended up as a member of the Trailblazers, really had a difficult time, especially at the beginning of the season, figuring out what his role was on the Trailblazers, but by the end of the season, especially in the playoffs, got a much better idea of what Thomas Robinson could be and what he could contribute to the Trailblazers. So with that being said, you know, before we dive into some of the statistics here of Thomas Robinson, one thing that um, I've been talking about, you know, both either myself or myself along with Dave, really the big theme when it comes to these bench players is thinking about being a specialist, being uh, you know, an elite player at or uh, having a skill that you are an elite player at really seemed like the best example of that last season for the Trailblazers, or at least probably the most well known uh, for that for the Trailblazers last year was Mo Williams, who was kind of this, you know, he was the sixth man of the team, but really his elite skill was the instant offense. He could come in um, immediately off the bench and make an impact offensively. Could he do that? On the defensive end, no. Could he be a, a great facilitator? Not always, but could he be a guy that could go in, you know, eight, ten minutes into the game and immediately contribute as a scorer? Absolutely. And that's really what set Mo Williams apart from a lot of his counterparts on the Trailblazers and really what earned him a lot of playing time. When it comes to Thomas Robinson, really maybe a guy that even more so than Mo Williams in terms of having one elite skill. Robinson is, as we know, an elite rebounder. That is what he does. He's extremely athletic, which aids in that process. But Robinson, both defensively and offensively, a guy that does uh, really the bulk of the rebounding for his team when he's on the floor. And that is really what the Trailblazers needed him for last season was to be that rebounder, especially off the bench. Um, there's obviously a number of flaws in his game, which we'll get to in a second. But uh, to, to get back to the main point here, the theme of all of these bench players as we go through is, do they have an elite skill? Do they have one thing that they do that no, either no one else on the roster does or one thing that makes them you know, uh, a guy that you have to play that does one thing so well? It's really what we even saw in San Antonio. Um, they didn't force their bench guys to do a ton of different things. They were really specialists in one or two things. For Thomas Robinson, that is the rebounding. So let's look at the progression that Thomas Robinson made between 2012, uh, 2013, and then this most recent 2013-2014 season. Again, a very interesting year for Robinson considering that He's already played for three NBA teams in his first two years as a pro, uh, was on three NBA rosters through just one year as a pro. So uh, this is, this is um, you know, partly him uncovering his identity, but it's also some looking at, at certain places that there needs to be quite a bit of improvement if he wants to live up to the hype as that number five pick in the 2012 draft. So again, let's let's look first at the 2012-2013 statistic for Thomas Robinson. First, the rebounds per 36 minutes. Uh, I did this um, per 36 minutes stat mainly because Robinson um, didn't get a ton of playing time last year, or at least it was sporadic. And then by the end of the season, he finally was able to fill that role as the backup power forward. Um, and that last, or excuse me, two seasons ago, averaged 10.7 rebounds per 36 minutes, which is a pretty solid number for a rookie. However, there are some downfalls. Again, this is a guy that has really one skill, and that is the rebounding, the 10.7 rebounds per 36 minutes. But let's get to these other statistics, and we'll see a much bigger, um, a little bit of a drop-off here. Uh, the first one is 
the free throw percentage, Robinson only shot 52.3% uh, from the stripe in 2012-2013. Additionally, these are a little more advanced, but there, there is a, a point here. Um, you can track, or, or it is tracked, their field, each player's field goal percentage from a specific area of the floor. So first, Robinson, between 0 and 3 feet from the basket two years ago, was averaging 53.6%, which is a pretty low number considering most of those shots are right at the rim. So in his rookie season, Robinson really struggled finishing in and around the basket. Uh, and then you, you, you start to get a little bit further away from the basket, 3 to 10 feet, he shot 27.3%, which for a guy that's supposed to have a little bit of a, a mid-range game, not a very good number. But again, I think that that 0 to 3 feet, only shooting 53%, that's the, that's the type of percentage that you, know, you should be shooting in that 3 to 10 foot range, not right around the basket once you get in that restricted area. Let's fast forward to this most recent season for Robinson. 12.7 rebounds per 36 minutes, bump that up by a full 20%, which is a big jump for Robinson, especially when, remember, back to the beginning of the, it seems like Robinson's been on this roster for a while, but it's only been one season. Remember back at the beginning of the year when it didn't seem like Robinson knew exactly what he was supposed to do. A lot of times he would play more isolation. A lot of times, you know, he would try to be the go-to guy in that second unit. He really realized that all I need to do is rebound the basketball. And you can see that reflected statistically in that two rebound jump per 36 minutes to 12.7. Also barely increased the free throw percentage uh, up to 56.4%. This is one part of Robinson's game that, um, you know, I, I think gets somewhat swept under the rug is that part of the reason that he can't be on the floor later in games, A, you know, he's he's still a young player and, and isn't quite ready for it, but B, he's really going to have to boost that free throw percentage if he wants to have an opportunity to be a part of the closing unit as opposed to just a bench player, just a specialist. Secondly, or excuse me, the, the third stat, big increase in the field goals right around the basket, all the way up to 64.1%. We saw Robinson last year. It, he really became a good finisher around the rim. We also saw that not only um, as a guy that, that could do it sometimes himself, usually not all that often, but using his ability as an offensive rebounder to get those rebounds and get second chance points. That's really where Robinson was at his most effective, was being able to not only rebound the ball on uh, after the Trailblazers missed a shot, but being able to finish immediately afterwards. And you see that big jump in his ability to finish right at the rim between zero and three feet. However, quite a big drop between uh, 3 and 10 feet, a little bit more mid-range for Robinson, down to 17.9%. This is the part of his game where you saw at the beginning of the year, Robinson tried to be a guy that could uh, finish you know, at the rim, yes, but also have a little bit of a mid-range game. And it's clear that that wasn't necessarily Robinson's strength. So to go back to these, you know, the, the overlook at these statistics here quickly before we move into the, the Trailblazers bang for their buck, Robinson was a player that rebounds the ball extremely well, extremely efficiently, especially on the offensive end. And the big thing for him in terms of improvement, yes, the rebounding improved and we knew he could do that. But the biggest improvement really, as you can see from these stats, is that finishing right at the bucket. When he gets that offensive rebound, if he is authoritative, if he goes right up and uh, usually uh, dunks the basketball, which is why you see such a high percentage there for Robinson, having him be a good finisher at the rim is a huge advantage for the Trailblazers because of how good he is on the offensive boards. When they don't require him to be an offensive isolation player, when they don't require him to be the main focal point on offense, when he's only averaging 17 a little under 18 percent shooting from that mid-range that's where robinson really gets stuck in the black hole and that's clearly a place for improvement for him in the in the years ahead but 
think it really goes to show that he understood how important his role was as that offensive rebounder and defensive rebounder, but also his importance as being a second chance points guy for the Trailblazers. And that is really a big place where Robinson was able to boost his game last season. Let's move now into the second part of our player reviews. As with all of these, it's the bang for the Trailblazers buck. And that's a little bit more difficult, as I've said before, because uh, when you when you start to talk about these players that are on rookie salaries or at least players that are um, newer into the league, it's a little bit more difficult to compare. So I do like to try to compare uh, players that have, you know, if they're a younger player, I do like to try to compare them to younger players as well. And that's what uh, we're doing here with T. Rob. And let's go look at Thomas Robinson and his statistics. First, on a salary of $3.5 million, Thomas Robinson had a true shooting percentage of 50.2%, which is taking into account all of his different shooting uh, percentages, two point, three point, and free throw percentages. Additionally, uh, the total rebound percentage. Total rebound percentage is a measurement of the percentage of rebounds that were claimed by that one player. And in this case, Robinson claiming 18.9% of the available rebounds, which is a very high number, and really goes to show that when he's on the floor, the guy is getting most, or, you know, almost a fifth of the available rebounds in the game. So, a uh, pretty impressive number there for Thomas Robinson. Only played 12.5 minutes per game. That number really sporadic again at the beginning of the season. Got a little bit of playing time, sort of split time with Joel Freeland, and then a little bit with Myers Leonard. And then Myers Leonard sort of fell out of the rotation and he split it with Joel Freeland. Then Freeland went down with an injury. So T Rob ended up picking up the bulk of those minutes by the end of the season and really fell into place by the end of the year. But again, only 12 and a half minutes per game for Robinson at a salary, as I said before, of three and a half million dollars. Let's go now to our first player hidden on the screen with a true shooting percentage of 45.9%, which as a big, both players being compared here are both uh, front court players, as a big, not a very great percentage. We see these numbers often are a little bit lower because of the free throw percentage. However, um, you know, still a very low number, 40, just, just under 46%, and only claiming 9.8%, uh, or excuse me, the, the total rebound percentage, only 9.8%. However, this player did play 17 minutes a game, just over 17 minutes a game, at a salary of $3.2 million. And let's go to the last player on our screen, 52.8% true shooting percentage uh, with a rebound percentage of 16.3%. Um, and that was in 31.6 minutes per game. So a ton more minutes uh, for our last player, you know, almost uh, over double the number that Robinson was getting at a salary though of $4.1 million. So let's reveal these players now. Player, uh, the first hidden player is Darrell Arthur, a front court player that spent his first season in Denver last year. Arthur, a player that didn't have really, it, again, when you talk about these bench players, you're really trying to get them to, to have an elite skill. Um, and when you compare these, uh, what Robinson had versus what Arthur had, you can tell that Robinson is a much better rebounder than Arthur was last season. And the final player was Tristan Thompson, a more controversial player in Cleveland, especially since LeBron going back to Cleveland, controversial in the sense that everyone is really has their eyes on Thompson as a player that needs to step it up since LeBron has decided to go back to Cleveland. Only sh the, the true shooting percentage of 52.8% Another guy that's really trying to understand his role on the team, which is obviously going to change next year um, with the King going back home. But uh, again, a, a pretty high rebounding percentage for Tristan Thompson, 16.3%. He was really only one of two guys, really him and Anderson Verja were the two players last season 
that were uh, front court guys that could get a lot of these rebounds. So you see that uh, Tristan Thompson, a uh, pretty high rebounding percentage, yet Thomas Robinson uh, in less minutes still with a higher rebounding percentage than Thompson did, and Tristan Thompson playing 31 minutes a game, so a much more established player, and at the end of the day, getting paid $600,000 more per year. So in comparing these players, Again, as I said at the outset, it's a little bit difficult to compare these guys because once you start to get into these bench players, when I say specialists, each one of them has a little bit of a different specialty. But I think the main point here is that Robinson is a player that, at his salary level, is a really good rebounder, a very good rebounder, to the point where he's better than guys that are making you know five, six hundred thousand dollars more than him in terms of rebounding percentage. The issue is, and it comes back to when we saw the progress that he was making, can he continue that efficiency or that he can continue can he continue that rate at which he is rebounding the basketball? And there's certain flaws in his game that he's certainly going to have to overcome. Mainly, uh, the free throw percentage is a big one, and also a little bit of that mid-range game. But at the end of the day, for Thomas Robinson, it all gets back to the one skill he is good at and also just not making many mistakes and really understanding what his role on the Trailblazers is. His role is to come in, rebound the ball, get second chance points, um, you know, use his athleticism both on the offensive end and hopefully next season a little bit more on the defensive end. If he can really do that, he immediately becomes a rotation player for the Trailblazers. And that's a huge deal, especially on a team that's really increasing in its depth. They obviously uh, have one more guy that should be getting some more playing time and Chris Kamen that they signed this offseason. So when you start to think between Aldridge and and uh, Robin Lopez plus Chris Kamen, and then you have uh, both Thomas Robinson and Joel Freeland will be fighting for playing position. This is a very competitive front court. Not to say it's you know the, the best front court in the league, but at least the players that they have right now are going to be competitive. And the thing that is most important for Thomas Robinson is he needs to make sure that he does what he does, and that's what's going to earn him playing time and really uh, start to, to improve that mid-range game a little bit without thinking that even with an improved mid-range game, he becomes immediately the uh, the star of the second unit because that's really where he suffered last season. That's going to do it for today's Blazers Edge player review. This the another bench player is in the books in Thomas Robinson. Make sure to check out all the previous videos. Uh, we've already covered a couple of the bench players between C.J. McCollum and Myers Leonard, plus a couple of the, uh, at least one of the starters in, in Wesley Matthews a little bit earlier as well. So make sure that you check all of those out. We'll be coming at you in the coming weeks, really in the coming months, breaking down each one of these players. And as always, with any of the emails, send them in to blazersub at gmail.com. Those go directly to Dave's inbox. And make sure that you put mailbag in the subject line so Dave can use those emails both in these video casts as well in his regular mailbag segments. And that's going to do it for me, Sam Tung, here from blazersedge.com. We'll talk to you all very soon.